Have you ever wondered what it would take for A&R to give your music career wings? Well, if you have, then you'll definitely want to check out our featured conversation with Kenny Tick Salcedo, who is Senior VP and Head of A&R at Red Bull Records. We discuss how does Red Bull Records make their signing decisions, and how the label integrates the act's music into their marketing efforts, as well as what he specifically looks for and excites him when signing new artists today, and much, much more. Coming up. This episode of the Mubu TV Insider Video Series is brought to you by the Music Business Registry. The Music Business Registry is the leading music industry publisher of the most up-to-date contact information for major and independent record label A&R, music publishers, artist managers, music attorneys, music supervisors, and much, much more. The Music Business Registry is the trusted industry standard and source serving the music business community for over 30 years with the most accurate and up-to-date contact information available. Their titles include the a r Registry, the Film and Television Music Guide, the Music Publisher Registry, and the Music Attorney Registry. All of their publications are available in PDF, CSV, or online subscription. Visit musicregistry.com and use coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. When you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Hi, it's Eric Knight from Mubu TV, where our mission is to educate, empower, and engage your music career. We're coming to you from the Global Rock Summit here in Burbank, California, where we managed to catch up with Kenny Salcedo, who is Senior VP and Head of A&R at Red Bull Records. Kenny, thank you so much for doing this. Always good seeing you, my friend. Really good. I mean, uh, we had an amazing conversation a couple of days ago. One of the we most did. inspiring that I've ever had, uh, speaking to somebody of your stature in A&R. Oh. And uh, yeah, it was a it was a great conversation. So wow. thank you. Yeah, very I, flattered. Honor. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you. You know, we're here at the Global Rock Summit. Mm -hmm. You've been speaking on some of the panels. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, from your perspective as an A and R executive, what is the current state of rock music today, and where do you think it's evolving towards? It's it's a great question. I think where rock music is evolving, and where I don't think it's ever left. I think its DNA has permeated all genres. Right? If you go to any festival or any hip hop festival, you see young artists wearing Nirvana shirts or <laughs> My Chemical Romance shirts or, or, or really referencing that kind of, those kinds of artists, right? But you could, you could even go deeper, right? You go see an artist like a Duckworth and he's wearing a Bad Brain shirt. Right. You know, um, being lucky enough to have, having worked for the Beastie Boys, they were like the ultimate amalgamation of, of that combination of punk and hip hop and all of those things. And I think a lot of artists nowadays are genreless they just happen to either make, they use maybe hip hop or R&B or, or rock as kind of their main genre, but it really does all bleed into each other. So I think rock music has, will constantly evolve in mainstream culture. Um, Halsey, her last record, <laughs> being yeah. what, and, and, you know what I mean? And, right. and, but that's in her DNA. You know, people, I, I don't know the artist personally, but I can tell you that her early stuff was influenced by rock and, and, right. and pop, you know, so, and, and you look at bands that we work with on, on the roster, whether it's a, a Beartooth or Albert Hammond Jr. or the Aces and, and Flaws, those are considered rock, but they're so influenced by so many things. I yeah. mean, you know, so I think, I do think rock will continually, continuously evolve a, into different genres and continue to survive. Absolutely. Do you know the story on how Red Bull decided to launch a record label? As I believe you were there from the very beginning, and how did you get that gig? No, no, no. It, okay. It's funny. It's a great question. I would, I would say that that would be Greg Hammer, okay. managing director of Red Bull, could answer that. Red Bull Records, he could answer that question okay. much better than me. But me, as the head of ANR, I've been here uh, nine years. I was okay. hired by Greg Hammer, um, and I could tell you that the company, it, it, we have a mandate, we have to be the most artist friendly record label that we can possibly be, right? Uh, and that's coming from Greg Hammer, the managing director all the way down. Um, and when he was deemed with the task with his boss and, and the early incarnation of Red Bull Records to start this company, um, when you look at what Red Bull Records is from this point and you work your way backwards, the mandate has always been artist friendly, the mandate has always been one to two to three artists a year signings. So I think for me, looking back and kind of some of the things I've mentioned to you even on Monday in our podcast, it's, it goes back to how great the brand is and, and Red Bull having all of these amazing tentacles 
in action sports and in, in, in media in music right so then you go into red bull records and i think that you know it's it started i believe greg gave it the date of june I, i'm sorry july 1st 2007. Funny enough, I share that birthday, July 1st, funny wow. enough, ironically. <laughs> uh, but but, uh, but uh, it, it started back then because that was the day Greg had hired their first employee uh, to Red Bull Records. And, um, and I think that company has really, I mean, listen, the company has grown, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I have an A&R team that's unbelievably amazing and competitive, <laughs> and, and I love them. And, and, uh, and Greg has really grown the company well. So I think that kind of, uh, for a deeper history, I would want to set you up with Greg. I think that okay. I would want to have him. That'll be our his, future interview for Boo Boo TV. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Greg Hammer. Okay. So what was it specifically that you looked for or saw in the artist that excited you the most that you signed as an A&R executive? And how has that criteria evolved over the years? What was it specifically? Oh my God. I mean, I, I think some of my favorite signings have never been research. Okay. Um, I think one of my favorite signings of my entire career was Wiz Khalifa. Um, hearing Wiz's music through Benji Grinberg uh, at the time, Ro head of Rostrum Records, still is, and manager as well, and he, and, and, you know, him in this, and, and it, let me, let's rephrase, let's rephrase this. I think Benji Grinberg being so early developing Wiz Khalifa through his own indie called Rostrum Records, right? Right. Um, I think I was attracted to that because I had come from an indie right. at Grand Royal with, under Mike D. So I saw this kind of similarity in what Benji was doing with Rostrum, kind of handpicking these amazing artists that moved him. And me being an A&R director at the time at Warner Brothers Records, which is now Warner Records, right. I was so attracted to the idea of true development. And I saw that that's what Benji was doing with Wiz. I saw that the attorney at the time, who's amazing, Jennifer Justice, was involved. And they were building something special. And Benji was feeding me music um, and really feeling like this was something that we could do together. And that was just grassroots. I flew out to see Wiz play and met with him and his mom and his management team of Benji and Chad and, and, the, and the label, Rostrum Records, and it just felt like a dream. It felt like an 18-year-old Wiz Khalifa blowing my mind with a live show and these amazing demos and this amazing independent album he made. I mean, that's what people don't realize is when I went after Wiz, he had already put out Show and Proof, right. which was his first independent album with Benji's help. And it was magic. It was magic and it was the true development. So yeah. it, was, it, was, it was me kind of seeing this, almost like a baby band, put out their little indie record. And I was like, this is incredible. And I brought uh, Wiz over to Burbank, where we are right now. Right. Um, and to meet with the, you know, Tom Wally and Craig Aronson. Um, Craig Aronson, legendary a &R. Please, everyone, do your research <laughs> on who Craig Aronson is. Uh, unbelievable a &R person. And they greenlit it. They greenlit the deal. And it was a dream. It was an absolute dream to do Wiz Khalifa. And I think I carried that same passion of going after artists early. Same thing with Terrace Martin, the same thing with Beartooth, the same thing with Aces, and the same thing with so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every genre. You know, I don't really limit it to uh, just rock music. I, I, right. I love, I, when I look at artists like Wiz, I always think there's always that kind of angsty rock star kind of energy that they all have. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, like, absolutely. Like a lot of them have it. Like Aces have this kind of, angsty punkish energy to mm -hmm. them with the with they could write the most pop right rock song you could hear right. but it's so angsty um Beartooth, it's ferocious you know ferocious, you listen to yeah. you listen to caleb's voice it's out of here yeah right great management team there and, and then you look at then you look at all the artists we have on the roster even blast has a bit of angst to him um all of these artists do you know what i mean i think there's always that kind of rock star energy that we all look for in those artists absolutely I wanted to ask you, when you're serious about signing an artist, how important does their live performance factor into your decision making? Great question. Um, I think with Wiz, I think what it's, it sold me, the music sold me, his look sold me. But when I saw him live, it was early days. Let's, right. let's not get it to There's an 18-year-old Wiz Khalifa performing in front of a bunch of college yeah. kids, right? But when you see that, you saw, you saw the star power. You saw him move around the stage you saw him command the stage and there's a kid you know literally a, a kid yeah. that could be in high school killing it um and it's a it plays an important factor uh red bull records had a mandate early on in its inception that we wouldn't sign an artist unless we saw it live mm. that changes over the years i think a lot of labels uh, have adjusted but i will say that Beartooth, same thing we didn't make an offer 
until we saw it live. Myself and the GM at the time, uh, David Burrier, flew to Columbus, Ohio, uh, January, I believe, uh, 2013 maybe. And we flew out and we saw it live. And Caleb Shomo destroyed that small club called Kobo. <laughs> and it was like a punk show, a pit, kids going crazy. And Caleb being as tall as he is, he leaped up and grabbed the ceiling fan and by accident, because he didn't know his own strength, tore it down. Wow. And we were in awe. We were in absolute awe at that show. You know, same thing with Early Wiz. Um, and you watch these shows and it plays in a, a massive factor. Same thing with the Aces. You know, myself and, and uh, Greg Hammer and at the time the GM, at that time Joe Kalitri, we all flew down to see the Aces live. We were already in, we were in, we loved the music. Right. But we saw them live and that band, it wasn't manufactured. That was a band that you could tell years and years of playing in a garage, right. small shows, grinding, grinding. It out. Yes. and that singer was like a baby Joan Jett and the guitarist and the bass player and the drummer were like, even though there's only two siblings in that band, it was like siblings all working together to make this incredible, I believe early incarnation of what the Aces would become, you know, when they right. sell out the Fonda and do that, right. you know what I mean? So we were able to catch it early and I think that that blew my mind and you buy in. You know, you work for a company like Red Bull Records, you want the total package. You want great music, you want the cult, you know, you want artists that can make a cultural impact. Yeah. But at the same time, you want those artists to wow a crowd. I mean, think about it, right? Uh, the, you know, back in the day, artists would make a record and go away for two years. Right. And you, the way you kind of kept track of them is hopefully you saw them in magazines, printed magazines, or, and you had posters on your wall to remind you of how amazing they were, whether it was hip hop, whether it was Tribe Called Quest on your wall, right. or uh, whether it was punk, and you had Minor Threat on your wall, yep. but you had these artists on the wall. And um, what's fantastic about that is these kids nowadays, uh, I wanna say kids, you don't wanna use that word, but these fans that are extremely young, probably younger than my niece, uh, grew up on IG and all these platforms, Right. And they're, they no longer have the posters on the wall, right. maybe. Their or posters may, now are on the app. Yeah. The posters are now on the app. And the artists are more accessible and they never go away. Right. And some people are like, some A&Rs, I, 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 you know, I come to these, these conventions and I think to myself, when you compare notes, they're like, oh, we always want our artists constantly putting out music. That's, that's fine. That's obvious though, right? Right. When those artists are really active on these social platforms, there's two things there. It gives away a mystique of who they are, but they become almost so accessible and human right. that these younger fans feel like they know them, right? Right. So like where me, I had to wait every two years for a Beastie Boys album, right? Exactly. Or a Dr. Dre album, or, or right. a, a, you know what I mean? Or any of those hip hop records that I just grew up listening to or punk albums. Um, now, you can just go on IG and say, oh, they're in the studio with, you know. <laughs> right. You know, but, you know uh, Caleb's in the studio right they're now. They're going making live. And they're they're showing, alive. Yeah, Caleb yeah. just wrote a new Beartooth song. I guess they're making LP5, you know. Right. Aces are in the studio. A Blast is working with this artist. You know, I guess they're in the studio. You can, you can literally look at this like that. And that's what's fantastic. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, Kenny, how do you make signing decisions over at Red Bull? Is it with your A&R team does, or does the label defer to you? Oh, you know what, at, at, I know that it changes. It, it, it's different at every record label, right? At Red Bull Records, it's not A&R by committee, but it is really vetting and making sure these artists can make that cultural impact. And it is an A&R team. I, I, I love this A&R team we have and the head of the company, Greg Hammer, and we're all involved with that decision as well, you know, because you think about it, we have to activate as a global company. Right. So we, when we make that decision, it's a long process of figuring out, is this the right artist for us? Because think about it, the way it's set up, we don't sign 20 artists right. or 50 artists. It's one to two to three artists a year. So that's where we're at. Yeah. Um what are the trusted sources that you use when, when you guys are looking or when you're looking for a new artist for the label? Are there trusted sources? I mean, what, what areas do you go yeah, to? I mean, I, I mean, for me, I think uh, I always, it's, it's amazing. I, I know that for me, I really go through the trusted sources of managers. I okay. really believe in and love of all genres. Right. Attorneys <laughs> that are just true music fans and you'll find them. If yeah. they're music attorneys, they're usually complete 
music encyclopedias and they just love their artists because they're there to fight for the artists. Right. Um, and honestly, I love the fact that we do accept unsolicited demos through our site, but at the same time, to truly vet it, if you can have a reliable, I would say, repre representative of your band or your artistry, or if you're an R&B singer, hip hop singer, uh, you know, rapper, you know, just uh, in a punk band, it, it's great to have a manager or somebody representing you to get in front of people like myself and, and the a &R team that we have. Um, and I have my trusted sources. And also I have, to tr I have to trust my gut and I have to trust the a &R team. I mean, I think, uh, I think everyone on the a &R team has incredible chops and there's sometimes they bring, they bring stuff to the table and they gut check themselves. They'll yeah. be like, hey, what do you think of this? You know, because you think about it, this is what we do all day, right? Right. So a Charles C.B. Burks or Jared Lane or even the managing director, Greg Hammer or myself, Kenny Salcedo, I think we all listen to everything, all genres, but we all always have to gut check ourselves. Like I've had the head of the company send me a, a demo of an artist he just came across that he just liked and that cold emailed him <laughs> and he just loved it. He just absolutely loved it. Maybe it wasn't for us at that time, but that's kind of how we're, we're really open. And because we don't sign a lot, yes, we have a lot of pressure. We have to win. We, have, right. we want the best for our artists, right? You want to have success. You want to have all these things. Um, and you want to have the best artists you can possibly have at the record label you work for. But we're very open to see where we get these artists from. That's great. Um, Red Bull has a brand, you know, that has so many tentacles. We kind of touched on this at the podcast within different lifestyle areas, mm -hmm. such as extreme sports, etc. Do you integrate the labels, artists, music into those areas? And if so, question. how? Great question. And it's it's a uh, shout out to a, a, an executive named Scott Slutsky. He's fantastic. Uh, he's been at he's been at the company for a very, very long time. I don't even want to say how long <laughs> uh, since he was a young, young kid, you know, um, but Scott has a title that my boss gave him and it's called brand integration. And that's literally what it is. I mean, it is the perfect term. It's VP of brand integration. And what this guy does, he works with Greg and they together figure out how do these artists plug into the, into the brand. Right. Um, and it's a hard job. It's not easy. It's not like it's just plug and play. It's carefully curated. What, you know, an artist like, listen, we have an artist that Wonder Girl signed named Jugger, who I think whether you listen to punk or, or, or a style of rock or hip hop, you're gonna love them. But Jugger is obsessed with the brand and wants to tap in action sports, F1, you know, everything, soccer, right. I'll play, you know. And you love that, right? But that's up to brand integration to figure out how it fits in tastefully mm. right. and how it works. But it's a, it's a wonderful question. I mean, to have a department, right, at yeah. an indie label that specializes in that, it's amazing. So, they, so we have that. And, and I'll tell you, um, the, uh, thanks to Scott and his initiatives and brand integration, he's been able to integrate Caleb Shoma, uh, Beartooth. He's been able to integrate the Aces in some brand activations that fit the, the artist and that really made sense. Um, I would say Beartooth, Aces, uh, Blast being one of the more recent ones that have tapped in. Um, it's amazing that way. And you know, if you look at Red Bull Studios too, that is an activation that uh, has been around for, I believe, 14, 15 years. It's an incredible uh, studio that I think is probably my favorite studio I've been to in my entire life. I mean, I'm not saying that because I work yeah. for Red Bull. I've been into studios for, you know, many, many years, but uh, that was something that the, that Greg Hammer actually commit, you know, they, they asked Greg to commission that studio and he did. And when he did, that studio has been an incredible use for not just Red Bull Records, like Red Bull Records uses this studio like crazy, right? right. But we've, offered it to friends of, of Red Bull Records and artists, and it's been such a cool tool to yeah. have, and that was something that's, that's housed over at uh, Stewart Street in Santa Monica, where right. the brand's at, so it's pretty cool. It's amazing. Kenny, are there any specific books, videos, or any other types of media that you would recommend to our insiders that you feel would be helpful in shaping their, their music career? Everything you need to know about the music business. If you don't have that, please pick that up. Um, <laughs> my, the classic. My boss the would say watch Swimming with Sharks, but uh, <laughs> shout out to Greg Haber. Uh, you know what, I, I would just say um, watch as many documentaries as you can. You can just go on Netflix, you can do as many music documentaries as you can of all genres. Right. Um, I, I'm a huge Jimmy Iovine fan, I, oh, I, yeah. I just, so I love watching the Defiant ones. Um, I love reading, I read the, the David Geffen book. I love yes. that book. 
Um, the operator, I believe. The yeah. operator. Yeah. Um, there's a book called A and R that I have to go back to and read again, but it's amazing. And John Silva gave me that book when I was a up and coming uh, exec, <laughs> wow. which is amazing to have a book given to me by by that amazing manager. Yeah. Um, and I think those are all incredible books, and as much as you can get your hands on. Um, I, you have to be a sponge for this business, and I think you get you have to get inspired by by all genres. You can't just limit it, right? Right. You can't limit it. Um, watching, you know, look at look at the history of what all of these executives, you know, Amit Erdogan. Right. Look that man up. Look up Lenny Warnaker. Look up Mo Austin. Yep. Look up these amazing artists, these amazing execs. Look up uh, just these incredible executives who have been in the business for for so long. But also pay attention to the way things have have changed and the people who are doing what they're doing at major labels, you know, and, and are changing the landscape, right? So those people are pushing the boundaries of what, you know, Craig Kalman's still doing it. Yeah. Still doing it at a competitive level. You know, head down, hard work, you know, right? Our label, Greg Hammer and, right. and our A&R team, right? And our, our, you know, our marketing team's growing and they're great. And I think you just have to pay attention to these executives who you'll, you'll hear their name and they may not be that loud with interviews and media, when you do your research on what yeah. they what dots they connected, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what John Jenick and Sam Rebeck and these guys have done with Interscope and uh, and you look at Warner Records continuing to do it. Right. it it's fantastic. But know yeah. your history though. I, th I think I think it's it's important to study. I mean, think about this. When I was at Warner Brothers Records, that which wasn't that long ago, right? There was a whole history there. Craig Aronson had signed My Chemical Ro Romance, the used. Um, all of those bands that pretty much shaped a moment in time in rock music, yeah. but also diversified uh, the roster sonically right. and brought me in. And then I brought in Wiz and Terrace to his roster. And that was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. So amazing. Kenny, what advice would you give or do you have as an A&R executive for up and coming artists who are looking to have a career in music? Um, I would say keep your, you know, keep your head down, work hard, practice. Uh, you you got to work harder than anyone out there. Keep that drive. Stay true to the music you're making. I would say um, some of the greatest artists have won because they've trusted themselves and they're open for failure. And I kind of said this on the podcast. I said, um, look at your losses like lessons, right? I think that's right. a common thing. That's not something I invented. People say that all the time in sports. Um, and L is a lesson. And, uh, and you look at those losses. I mean, sometimes you can play a show that's absolutely humiliating. And, and it could break you down. But if you really believe you have it in you to succeed, you keep pushing. You know, some of the best, uh, you, you know, Kanye, you watch that Kanye documentary in Netflix, and he said, all my beats didn't just sound like this from right. the jump. Right. Like his beats were probably horrible when he started, but horrible to him, right? Who knows? They were probably amazing <laughs> to like the, right. the Nike, you know what I mean? Right. But, but I really believe, you know, I don't want to discourage anyone. You never know who that next star is. You never know. I mean, there's, there are artists all the time who get dropped from major labels or indie labels or never get that shot who with time half a decade pass and they're the biggest artists in the world, you know? So you have to kind of, it's not about being cautious of who you're, no, you, it should be genuine. You should really just be cautious and, and, and be genuine of who you come in contact with right. because you just never know. And I saw it firsthand. I, I watched Wiz Khalifa get signed by myself and get dropped. And my boss and I, Craig, loved him and believed in him and he greenlit that signing and we did it together. And, and when Wiz got dropped, there wasn't anyone at that major label who thought he was gonna become the Wiz Khalifa that we all know now, right. without question. Otherwise he would never been let go. Right? Or, part, or let's just say the proper term, parted ways with the label. Right. But you look at that, right? And you look at how iconic he's become. Wiz Khalifa is iconic. He's an iconic artist and that is, because he believed in himself more than anyone else, right? And the people who believed early do, right? So that's the way I think any, if, if you, there's a reason why people sometimes make jokes when Kanye West is looking in the mirror and says, you're the best. As crazy as that sounds, right? You don't have to do that so right. obvious and so, so, so wild. I love it, I love it, but you don't, but however you do it, whatever gets you up to get up on that stage or to write that music, that is what you have to do. So I hope, it's the belief. That's what it comes down to. Wow. Some really great information coming from Kenny, a leading A&R executive at Red Bull Records. 
So insiders, question of the day. From this video, what were the most important takeaways that you found valuable from Kenny? Was it his criteria of what excites him the most in the artists he signed and how that criteria has evolved over the years? Or was it the trusted sources he relies on when looking for new talent? Or was it how Red Bull, as a company, can integrate the label's artist into so many initiatives of the company? Do you have any ideas or experiences that you'd like to share regarding this topic? We'd love to hear from you and connect in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to Mubu TV for more information on how to educate, empower, and engage your music career. In addition, we recently put together a free guide on the best strategies to use when contacting A&R executives. This is extremely important before beginning your journey. So if you're interested in receiving it, we've included a link to that in the description below. It's totally free and goes through the top do's and don'ts before you even think about reaching to A&R, such as asking yourself, is my music 100% ready to go? Making sure that you don't include attachments of any kind to your email, only direct links to either your Spotify or SoundCloud, and much, much more. This is an incredibly crucial guide into learning the art and etiquette of connecting with the A&R community. So if you're interested in receiving that, we'll link to it in the description below. You can also check out a summary of this episode and everything we talked about in the YouTube description as well. And if you enjoyed this video, we'd really love it if you hit the like button and let us know what other kinds of videos and types of content you would want to see on our channel. Hit us up in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.